There is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. And that's why I am on the trail of the Nephilim. The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of the Nephilim. The man on the shroud, conspiracy, or the real thing. We'll get into that and so much more after a word from a trusted sponsor, Noble Gold. For years now, people have been setting up a little contest between crypto and gold. But that's like comparing a truck with an SUV. Both carry stuff and travel from point A to point B. But they do different jobs. Gold's job is to keep the value of your money safe and preserve its value. And since Ukraine and all the nonsense that's going over there and the oil inflation crisis, it's done a brilliant job compared to stocks and other investments. If you're worried about what's going on right now, and frankly, folks, who isn't? Just talk to an expert at Noble Gold about precious metal IRAs for your retirement. They'll put you straight on your options and hold your hand through the whole setup process. And this month, for any qualified IRA, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American Virtue coin completely free as a thank you. Folks, please call 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. Now to find out, and if you want to go to the website, that's noblegoldinvestments.com, noblegoldinvestments.com. That's once again, noblegoldinvestments.com. They have been a faithful supporter of what we do here, and they really uh, help us by by uh, spending their advertising dollars on our show. So please consider that. Once again, 877-646-5347, noblegoldinvestments.com. Folks, can't wait. The gathering of our tribe, May 19th or the 22nd, you want it, you, you'll want to be there. They've got upwards of about 800 people. The herd, When the herd moves through the halls, it's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, it is the gathering of our tribe. All things with Prophecy Watchers. So go to prophecywatchers.com, prophecywatchers.com, register now. What are you waiting for? I'll also be at UF Disclo UFO Disclosure Symposium, May 27th to the 29th, Vernal, Utah. Um, I am the only so called Christian speaker which will present a different paradigm for the burgeoning UFO phenomena. Remember, folks, UFOs are real, <clears throat> burgeoning, and not going away. And that's why we cover the whole UFO phenomenon every single day, except for today. Why? Because it's Good Friday. This is a 3D sculpture created from the evidence found on the shroud. First of all, let's get into this, because there's a, there's a major conspiracy here. And, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. But this is what a, uh, a sculptor uh, looked at the shroud and the evidence um, that he was able to collect from the shroud, because the shroud, first of all, is this. It's a, it's a linen cloth about 13 feet long by about three and a half feet wide. It bears the imprint of a frontal and dorsal, so front and back, of a man in rigor mortis, in repose, who has been crucified. Here's the deal. Can we say for certain that it's Jesus of Nazareth? No, we can't. But we can say that the wounds uh, are absolutely dovetailing to the gospel. The wound on the side, the helmet of thorns, the scourging, it's all there. The fact that the nails are in the wrists and on the feet, it's unbelievable. So there's lots of forensic evidence. Also, this is what's incredible. So this blows the whole skeptical thing out of the water. Of course, no matter what you show a skeptic, there's gonna be, they're always skeptical. No matter how much evidence you show them, well, you know, and that's what they do. The bottom line is the, the shroud um, has three-dimensional information on it. No one knows how it was done. The forensics of this 
of this cloth are absolutely unbelievable. And we're going to get into that and so much more. So here's what it looks like. You can see face, front, and back. By the way, this is from a clip that a good friend of ours, Kevin Fahey, sent me. You can go online and, and check that out. So when Secundo Pio was, was commissioned um, to photograph the shroud, and this, this goes back you know, well over 100 years, I believe. So he's, he's got the, you know, the old box camera with the glass plates, right? He's putting the glass plates in, and now he's in his dark room, and he's developing the face, what he believes is the glass plate, the close-up of just the face. So as he's developing, he's expecting to see a negative. What he sees is a positive image. He almost drops the plate because he can't even believe it. In other words, this face right here comes up on the glass plates, and he is absolutely astonished. Who wouldn't be? The shroud, some people say, is a 15th century medieval fake. Okay, why? Because of the carbon-14 dating. Let's walk through that before I go any further. So the Shroud of Research, um, Traditory Research Project, spent hours and hours and hours. They collected pollen. They photographed it. Uh, we've interviewed Barry Schwartz. We've interviewed Dame Isabel Pixek. If you're interested, it's in our Watchers series. I believe it's Watchers 2. Um, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, both of these people, uh, Barry Schwartz and, and Dame Isabel Pixek, I mean, they are... They are students of the Shroud, more so than I am. And I've studied the Shroud since I became a Christian 42 years ago. So they went to do the carbon-14 dating, and they had agreed ahead of time they were going to take three samples from three different parts of the Shroud to make sure that they would get a really good carbon dating reading on it. Well, that's not what happened. As the scientists met to look at the Shroud, a bunch of guys in black suits come walking in and go, oh, everybody out of the room. So about three hours later, three hours later, um, they convene back into the room. This is all documented in, uh, in, in our film, Watchers 2, on the Shroud. It's also in Best of Watchers. So you can go to uh, use, our Uscreen channel, streaming.lamarzulli.net, and, and download it if you're really interested. And I hope, you, I hope you would be, because this is unbelievable information from two of the most incredible people that have studied the Shroud. Barry Schwartz was the, was the STIRP, Shroud of Troy Research Project uh, team. He was the photographer. Uh, they had 120 hours to examine the Shroud. Uh, I believe Barry was up for something like 110 of them. So, I mean, that's, he, was, he took thousands of photographs of the Shroud. Just incredible. So, the guys in the suits come back in and they say, well, you can only take samples from this corner of the Shroud. So that's not what the protocol, you know, that's not in line with the protocols that had been established before the team ever got there and agreed upon by all parties. So now we've got something at, eh. so they go in and they take the samples. They wait. Sure enough, the samples come back 15th century. Everybody goes, no, it can't be because the preponderance of evidence pointed to a much earlier date. And are you aware that there's pollen on the shroud that is only found in Jerusalem? Only found in Jerusalem. So let me get this straight. A forger, a fake guy, is going to take the cloth, go to Jerusalem, wait till springtime, get some flowers and sprinkle it over the shroud to make an authentic uh, copy. And then he's going to all know, he's also going to know in the 15th century about photography. So he's going to make a negative image on the shroud. Seriously? And it just goes on and on and on from there. Enter these two people. This man, I believe, was a monk. I forget his name. <clears throat> and he was very interested in the Shroud. And he's online. And he meets this woman online. And they're talking about the Shroud. And the emails go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They fall in love. They meet. He leaves the monastery. They get married. So their team, just the two of them, did a paper, wrote a paper on this and basically put it up for peer review. And the paper stated that the reason why the 15th century date came in for the, from the carbon dating of the shroud was because, drum roll please, was because the poor sisters of Claire were hired after the fire. You can see the burn marks. If you look right there, that's one of the burn marks from the fire, okay? So the poor sisters of Claire came in and they did something called invisible weaving, end-to-end -end splicings of the linen, except their splicing was cotton, okay? End-to-end -end splicing. This is unbelievable. And so they posited, this, this team, husband and wife team, that 
The reason why the carbon-14 dating was skewed was because of the end-to-end -end splicing from the Poor Sisters of Clare, which skewed the results. So they published this paper. One of the, the, the men, who was actually one of the textile experts and had samples of the shroud with him in his laboratory back in the States, well, said, read the paper and said, well, I can just prove that in 15 minutes. So he goes down. Why this wasn't done, who knows? He goes down, takes a sample, looks under the microscope. Sure enough, he sees end-to-end -end splicing. He writes a paper, which, and now, um, you know, it's just amazing how things work. So everybody on the planet knows that, oh, the shroud's a 15th century forgery. But they don't know that that's been completely overturned. It's not a 15th century forgery. There's no way it is. You've got forensic information on the shroud, and no one knows how it was put there. There was, in my opinion, time stopped, gravity stopped. Uh, Dame Isabel Pick Pixick talked about the singularity where... Um, time and space as we know it completely stopped. The body was levitated, the shroud was pulled tight, and then the body completely uh, disarticulated, evaporated. I'm not even sure what, what word I can use, but just in a million, billions of points of light which created the image on the shroud. We don't know, but we do know that he was resurrected. So moving right along, this is a sculpture that was based on the information of the shroud, okay? And the man is in repose. Uh, he has been brutally scourged, and I'll show you that in a second. There's a, there's a scourging. When Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, shows that scourging, um, I couldn't watch the whole thing. When they rolled him over, that's when I looked away. I just went, oh, my God. It was on both sides of his body. And you'll notice the area around the heart, uh, which is up in here. They didn't, they didn't get that. And, 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 and you look right, right in this area, right here where the sternum is, notice that the scourge marks aren't there. If they had scourged them there, they would have killed them. So the, the whipping, the scourging is incredibly brutal. And what they were able to, you know, shroud researcher, researchers were able to actually trace the wounds back to a Roman flagrum. It's a, a short stick about this, this, this long. And... The, the, the execution of a torturer, because that's what this is, would hold this, this whip with one hand. It had three strongs of leather, and there were bits of glass or metal. So as the, as the torturer lands that whip on the back, the metal digs in to the flesh. The metal of the glass, whatever, digs into the flesh, and he yanks it out. So every single stroke that you see here, it's like somebody taking a knife and sticking it into you and then popping, popping your skin open like that. Uh, the, the, which is why Jesus collapses on the way to the cross. I, the fact that he made it there at all is beyond belief. Notice the knee, how it's completely swollen. Look at the left knee, how it's swollen, the blood coming out of that. Look, look at the face and we can see the blood coming down. It's a helmet of thorns. It's, it's not really a crown. It's a helmet of thorns that, that goes on him. Again, the, 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 the scourging here is incredibly barbaric. There, there was no way around from this. There was, no, there was no reprieve. There wasn't going to be a last minute stay of execution. These are professional, uh, professionals who know how to kill a man. And so they did it with um, <laughs> barbarity, it's severe. It's so severe that I just, like I said, I had to turn away in Mel Gibson's film when they flipped him over and they're going to they're gonna scourge the front of him. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. Who can possibly withstand something like that? And then, of course, they lay the cross beam on him and up to Calvary he goes. When he's nailed to the cross, there, there's no backing out of this thing. Absolutely none. There is, there's not going to be a stay of execution. And, of course, when they drop the cross into the hole, thud and all those wounds like this. I mean, it's incredibly barbaric. And my question has always been, why? I mean, I get it. He died for your sins and my sins, for those of us who believe this, the blood of Jesus. So when we say the blood of Jesus, we're, we're calling upon something, an event in history where it's unprecedented. So once again, we see the, uh, the shroud here. You can see the face right there pointing to it right there. There's the face of the shroud. Look at it closely. You can see the hands uh, over his extremities. Um, it's just amazing. 
So this information is on the shroud surface. It's only on the very top. It's a herringbone weave. The shroud is a herringbone weave, which is very costly back then, which ties into the whole biblical account of Joseph of Arimathea taking him down and wrapping him in the shroud. So this is a, a 3D rendering from the shroud, from the information on the shroud. So the shroud, when you, when they, I don't have time to get into all this, but when you actually look at, there's a machine that they put the shroud under, photographs of the shroud, you get, from a two-dimensional photograph, you get 3D information. How is that possible? I call the shroud of Turin God's calling card because, in my opinion, it is forensic evidence that has been left for us to examine. And none of this came to light until the 20th century when Secunda Pia took the first photographs of the shroud. There you can see the wound in the, in the side, again from the sculpture. And I find this, um, he was a man's man. Look, look at the muscular definition. Um, and there, there's no gold gems back day. But this is a man, look, look, at, the, look at the stomach muscles. Um, he's got a six pack. He's not this little wimpy guy running around. He's a man's man. You know, he's a man's man. And I look at the face and, I mean, there it is. There it is. So, and that's, that's another shot of it, different lighting. So, in wrapping this up, I really believe that the shroud is God's calling card. I believe with all my heart that the forensic evidence proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that whoever was wrapped in that cloth bears the, the wounds identical to what we read in the biblical account. Remember, when he, when he was dying, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he, then he says, it is finished. We need to remember this, that this is the fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, that the proto-evangelium, someone is going to come and is going to crush the head of the serpent, and the serpent will bruise his heel. That's exactly what happens here. But the serpent's head is crushed. And this is why everything changes. This is why we are under a new dispensation, the dispensation of grace, not under the law anymore. Does that mean we abandon the law? Of course not. But we're not held to the law the way we were before the crucifixion. That's why it's so important for us to learn to forgive everybody everything because forgiveness holds us in bondage. So here he is, completely innocent of all charges. They're all bogus, but he knows what he's doing. And no, he, he lays down his life. No man takes it from him. He lays it down voluntarily. He could have gotten out by just talking to Pilate. He didn't do it. Like a, like a lamb before the shearers is done. That's, that's what he is. Fulfilling, fulfilling the prophetic text that we read about in the very early chapters of our Bible, Genesis 3.15. It's astounding. In my opinion, it is the most important event in all of history because from that moment when he dies and he sheds his blood, and we talked about this in my book, Counter Move, Shameless Blood, but where does he go? He goes down to the lower parts of the earth, Tartarus, and there he proclaims to the fallen watcher angels, no jailbreak, game over, I win. That's a three-hour discussion and I don't have time for it. So this Good Friday, um, share this far and wide. Because in my opinion, when you, and, and I've, I've challenged people, oh, it's just you know a Catholic relic. No, it's not a Catholic relic. Spend, I, I challenge you, if you're skeptical at all, spend an hour at shroud.com, www.shroud.com. Dot com, and then get back to me. Just don't write me an email, okay? This is forensic evidence from the Shroud of Turin. And by the way, the image is fading now. It's, it's beginning to fade. So the conspiracy is this. Uh, when Pope, uh, Pope Paul, Pope John Paul, was in his daughterty when he was failing, his health was failing, um, a group of people got a hold of him and... Pope signed off on it and allowed this, this German woman, a so-called textile expert, to go in and clean the shroud, which she did. She vacuumed the shroud, thereby destroying any and all forensic evidence once and for all. 
Who would do such a thing? They know. They know. They don't want this out. They don't want future generations, which perhaps would have more advanced forensic information or being able to um, get from the shroud more forensic information. They didn't want that to happen. So this woman vacuumed the shroud. Conspiracy? Conspiracy? A group of guys in suits come in and say, oh no, you can only take the sample from one area of the shroud. Conspiracy? You tell me. There is a hidden history that continues to be deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. Folks, in my opinion, this is God's calling card. The Shroud of Turin is God's calling card. Paid in full. Your sins, my sins, paid in full. Rejoice, he has risen. He has risen indeed. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, we'll see you on the air or in the air. Happy Resurrection Day on Sunday. I've seen a UFO. I've seen a UFO. And I saw a UFO. A UFO. A UFO. A UFO.